We open on a dad visiting his daughter Jake, short for Jacqueline, after what's apparently been a very long time. And they don't get along too well. But he's come for a reason. What's wrong with your arm? What's wrong with it is that it's attached to a dying man. Well, there's your problem. A brain tumor. But he knows of a nearby Native American tribe who has a secret that he thinks can help him. Because white people taking advantage of Native Americans always goes over well on this show. The cave of the creator, the waters of life. And she's skeptical about this because apparently they trust her and she doesn't want to betray that. I have a time bomb ticking away in my brain. And that changes your perspective. All those important things, truth, science, honor, love, they all become negotiable. There's a bit of foreshadowing. But dad wins her over in the end. Neat statue. Don't touch it. Afraid it's gonna bite? It's a matter of respect. It turns out that there's a shaman there named Saspondo who knows them but isn't crazy about them being there. You broke a promise to us. Saspondo, my father is sick. He's dying. I the promise you made is more important than the life of your father. Bardano Da, the god of forever, demands true faith of those who drink of these waters. But yeah, the dad drinks the water and it de-ages him. In my hand. And my eyes. It's a miracle! Oh. Aww. Yeah, I'm sure nothing bad will come from this. It's as if all the scars and pains of a lifetime have been taken off. And you, why haven't you drunk from these waters? Yeah, good question. This task has come down from father to son since my people first came to this land. To God. To serve. And to die. But if you can drink and live, how can you choose to die? It's an act of faith. Dad starts talking about bottling the water and selling it. Ah, uh, here we go. And now he's aged back to where he was before. Don't drink anymore! Don't you understand? It's a cheat! And now Jake just wants to take him home. How much do you love your daughter? What? Those he takes into his service are given the gift of long life. But there is a price. The God gives of his body to the pool. We must also give of our bodies a gift. One form of immortality for another. I don't understand. I love how long it takes him to pick up what Suspondo is putting down. You need to sacrifice your daughter, dude. This isn't rocket science. Can you imagine if Thanos just stood around going, wait, what do you mean there's a price? A gift of what? I don't understand. Gamora would have been like, just kill me already. But yeah, once he does get it, you can tell he immediately starts considering it. And Jake knows it too. We can beat this. No, I don't think Wait, so. Listen to me. But he doesn't actually plan on killing her. He thinks maybe he can just sacrifice a non-fatal amount of her blood. I know what you need is my life blood. I can't let you leave me. I need you. He can barely hold that knife steady. Don't tell me she couldn't have gotten away from him. But yeah, she gets stabbed to death and her life's blood drains into the water, which he then drinks from again. And now he's young again. I'll never go back to being what I was. No going back. What did it cost? Everything. To be 30 forever! The thousands of things, the ten thousands of things I've always wanted to do! And women. It's always about fucking, isn't it? And what is this? Your daughter. It turns out he has actually forgotten his daughter. Yes, of course. Jake, she was always a disappointment to me. Oh, well, that makes it okay. Now I can have more children. And I can sacrifice them, too. And on, and on. And he still wants to bottle and sell the water because it's all just science, you see. We can have it analyzed, find out what it's made of. Blood can be transfused, stockpiled. Water can be synthesized. Maybe just a precise combination of minerals in the rock, or, or just a result of microorganisms that live just in this one place. The mystery that lives in this place cannot be solved. Not by your science. I am a rational man. Yeah, killing your kid and then immediately forgetting them, that's what a rational person does. You gave me the knife. You told me what had to be done. And now he's blaming Suspondo. I am a man of science. You're a fool. You were a foolish old man. Now you've become a foolish young one. He's gathered some of the water in a flask, but Suspondo isn't about to let him leave with it. You spoke to me about my fear of death. 
hell about yours? And now that arthritis is coming back again. Soon you will be as the both of them. Or maybe it's something else. Yeah, that statue has been there the whole time, but no one has commented on it or seemed to notice it before now. In the 40 years I have served, he has moved. His eyes once opened have closed. It's a sad sort of a charm. One second will be a month. One minute a decade. Or one eternity. And so ends half as old as time. This episode is... Eh, technically not that great. It's very straightforward and pretty predictable. The second the shaman mentions there being a price for using the water, of course it's going to be that the man has to kill his daughter, who is right there. And the way that happens is kind of lame. She should have been able to fight back, or maybe he could have tricked her or something, rather than her just standing there and letting herself get stabbed to death. But I'll give the episode credit for not ending there like I would have expected. I thought he was gonna be like, what have I done? And then cut to credits. Though we did see the whole turning to stone thing in the last episode that dealt with white people trying to take advantage of Native Americans. That said though, I still found it fairly entertaining. The actors did a good job and the Native American shaman was compelling to watch. It wasn't offensive or anything, just not particularly good. There isn't even really a monster to speak of. They do talk about a god that's represented by a statue of a giant snake, but it doesn't ever show any sign of life or anything. The director and writers didn't do anything notable. The dad was played by Leif Garrett, who is apparently a musician and character actor, but hasn't been in anything I've seen. Jake was played by Valerie Wildman, who is mostly known for playing a main character in Days of Our Lives and a recurring character in Beverly Hills 90210. Suspondo was played by Nick Ramos, who played a recurring character on Falcon Crest and ended up playing another one in Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. I guess that's about all I have to say about this one. Sorry this is so short, but I haven't made a monster video in over a year. Cut me some slack. Next up is Museum Hearts. See you then. You white men have forgotten to fear your gods, but we have not. A god is a thing of blood, fire.